Welcome to Operations Analytics. In this lecture, we will cover statistical quality control. Let's briefly overview our course. We have so far covered linear programming and its, its uh, applications. And then we learned forecasting, simulation, waiting line management. And uh, by doing so, we learned predictive analytics and prescriptive analytics. From today, we are going to learn quality management and then uh, inventory control models. These are descriptive analytics because we want to understand how our process is performing and how inventory is performing for our business too. In this lecture, we'll focus on quality management. The learning objectives are threefold. Define the quality of a product or service. Second, develop two types of variable control charts, X bar and R, and develop two types of attribute control chart, P and C. The agenda is the variations in process. We want to understand the, pro the sources of variations. Second, variable control chart, process capability index, and attribute control chart. The single reason that we need statistical process control is because it enables us to check the reliability of a process. Whether it is a production or service setting, we want to understand whether the product being manufactured or the service being served is meeting the specification. Statistical process control does, does the job because it samples a number of products or services and investigate whether those are remaining in the uh, predetermined set of specifications. Changes in shift materials, equipment, and people also make it necessary for checking the process accuracy and stability. Statistical process control visualizes the current process that we have not thought of or we could not see, and we can see and monitor how it is being done and is it uh, uh, getting better or uh, deteriorating? Those things can be investigated by using statistical process control chart. That's why we are using it. First topic is the sources of variation in process. St statistical process control is a quality management tool to distinguish between natural variations and variations due to assignable causes. Variability always existed in process. Think of taking a course. Some students come early, some other students on time, and still other students come late. An instructor expects it to happen. However, say one day the majority of students did not come on time. It's an unusual case and one can suspect something unusual happened, such as traffic accident or incl uh, inclement weather. These are assignable causes. Natural or common causes affect virtually all production or service processes, whereas assignable causes can be generally traced to specific causes. The objective is to discover when assignable causes are present and eliminate the bad causes and incorporate the good causes into the system. So if you look at this statistical process control chart briefly, we have a nice uh, uh, pattern, but however, somehow we have this assignable cause that goes beyond our upper control limit, our specification. So this one needs to be investigated and the cause has to be eliminated. We discussed the variance can be divided into natural cause and assignable cause. In examining variance, we also need to look at two types of data. The first one is mean data and the second, ra the second range data. Looking at averages does not convey the whole picture to the operations manager. Let us take an example in, uh, uh, soon. Say we have two students. Uh, they took three classes. Student A received A, B, and C from three courses, respectively. However, student B received all Bs. 
So both GPA is the same, say 3.0. As a HR person, it might be difficult to decide which student is better and fit for the job. That's why we need to look at the variation. When we look at the standard deviation, we find that student B has zero variance out of these three courses, which means a consistency. However, student A does have variance, 1.0. Now, which is student to hire? Naturally, it depends on the job description. If the job is more about consistency, student B might be a better choice. If the job requires a strong understanding in operations management, student A should be a good fit. Anyway, the point of this uh, example is that we need to look at not only the uh, average, but also the variance or standard deviation or risk factor or sigma. We have to look at both sides to understand the whole picture. These figures are the graphical explanation about mean and range chart. When the process is shifting upward, uh, when range is consistent, you will see this kind of pattern where on the X bar chart means are increasing like this. And on R chart, everything is in control. So R chart, the, the range is consistent. So it's con consistent, it's in control. However, X bar chart is increasing like this and going out of the bounds. In contrast, in these figures, sampling mean is constant. But dispersion is increasing. As you can see, the dispersion is increasing. X bar chart is in control, but R chart is not in control, but it is encouraging, as you can see, because the range is increasing. The lesson to take from these examples is that both X bar chart and R chart have to be under control to conclude that the process is under control. By looking at either one, you can be mistaken. Always check both mean and range chart together and make the decision about the process.